Welcome to Extraordinary Women 2017. Hello, I'm Robin Christofferson, Executive Director of MCVP Crisis and Prevention Center. MCVP is grateful to have the opportunity once again to partner with the Keed Sentinel and all of the other sponsors to recognize women in the community who make a difference. MCVP is the local domestic and sexual violence and stalking crisis center for the 44 towns of the Monadnock region. We are a member program of the New Hampshire Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence and a Monadnock United Way agency. For nearly 40 years, MCVP has served thousands of survivors of intimate partner violence and delivered prevention programs to thousands more children, youth, and teens. Extraordinary stories, tragic and transformative, are part of our day-to-day -day work. However, it's not often that we have someone who's in a place in their healing process, in their emotional and physical safety, and with the courage to tell a small part of their journey. I'd like to introduce you to a friend of MCVP, Tracy Mazzelli. Throughout the 13 long years of being abused, I felt I was going deeper and deeper into a spiral of a thickening dark depression. I knew that between the constant fear of having to protect my children and myself, the final blow to the head and an AK.47 pointed at me that something had to change. I had to protect my daughter and decided to move to New Hampshire. Although I felt a little more comfort by being away from the physical abuse, I felt attacked and threatened by him even when he was put behind bars. I still felt I had to keep a constant awareness of who I was around, who could be listening for information to give to him of where I might be living. I couldn't feel safe in my own home. He threatened me verbally when still behind bars. He was trying to find weapons to get, so when he was released, he could find us and physically hurt me or end my life. He made agreements with people on the outside to find where I lived, to damage my vehicles, and to find when I was working. He attempted to reach out to people that he knew to bring physical harm to me, or as he said, beat her till she bleeds. There were threats to me endangering our daughter's mental and physical well-being, there were threats of physical and life-threatening harm to family and friends who would aid and support me. There were even physical threats upon law enforcement officers as well. I always thought and feared that no matter where I was or where he resided, he had constant control over me, even when he was locked behind bars. I never felt I was safe and that the need to always keep watch on my surroundings, to look over my shoulder, would never stop. And it would consume me, and the constant fear would be all that I could be. In April of 2014, I had the amazing opportunity of meeting a lovely woman by the name of Joan from MCVP. Joan was kind, warm, and compassionate. She had a complete understanding of my situation. She made me feel safe, so that I could finally talk about everything that had happened and that I had felt I couldn't say out loud. No matter when, Joan was there. If she was not able to be there, she brought several amazing women to, and come, to come and meet with me. They too were understanding and willing to sit down and talk. I didn't have to constantly repeat my story because it felt like they were there on my first visit with Joan which brought me a sense of warmth I hadn't felt in a long time. It has been a very long process. It wasn't just chalk. Joan came to numerous hearings with me in criminal and family courts in two different states. I don't know where I would be without the loving support I have received from the women I have come to know and care about, the advocates at MCVP. Tracy, thank you for shedding light on an often hidden subject and for your willingness to share part of your journey with us today. If you or someone that you know would like to join MCVP in providing compassion and support for someone like Tracy, we have an advocate training scheduled for September. Information is available 
at our resource table at the event. On behalf of MCVP's Board of Directors, Advisory Council, staff, and the community we serve, congratulations, congratulations Extraordinary, Extraordinary Women 2017. I don't have a favorite part of my job um, because some days I find myself working with national organizations that make a huge difference across the country. And then other days, I find myself working with local nonprofits that make a difference in our own backyards. And I love it, I love the breadth. I love how they all are advocates for change. I love it. <laughs> I'm very lucky, very lucky indeed. I love what I do and the, the children make a real difference to all of our employees. Um, this is a very happy place to work. Uh, it's challenging at times for, for everyone, um, but I can't imagine any other uh, place to be. We have broadened in our use in, of technology um, within the, the school as we have with medical technology, and that's really afforded the children opportunities to, um, to do things that they might not otherwise have. For me, it melded together a lot of interests um, and and really successfully brought together for me um, an interest in working with my body and with my brain and doing something meaningful uh, and something really directly purposeful so that's what it is we grow a carrot we harvest a carrot somebody eats the carrot so uh, I like that really direct purpose I am really drawn to sort of looking at the whole lifespan in my work. So I could be, you know, crawling around on the floor with a bunch of three-year-olds and pretending to be kitty cats and feel so joyful in that. And then go to visit the nursing home and sit and talk to people about their loves of their lives that are no longer with them and find a very different kind of joy in that. And learn from both experiences. I think uh, something that's always run through all my volunteer work is my passion for reading and literacy and community education and so I try to involve myself in those types of things. Personally there's a lot of satisfaction to be derived from volunteering. For me there's a greater satisfaction from any volunteer work I do than any paid work I've ever done. And so that, I think, you know, is probably the number one thing that drives me. But I also feel very strongly um, that to immerse yourself in a community um, is the best thing you can do. I found myself working with entrepreneurs because I was one of them. I was making soap and found that there wasn't local markets and also just working with people realizing that a lot of artisans and producers don't have the skills they need to uh, have a business. I love it, I think because of the creativity of it. The people who are entrepreneurs are, you know, their ideas and their energy is, it's just a great drug. <laughs> The staff here are so selfless and so dedicated to the work that they do and it just it drives you to want to make this a better place. We also have challenges that we need to address. For me in the past that I've I was always thought as a leader, well you need to have all the answers and you really need to be the driving force in getting things done and knowing that we have such a good team behind us to get the work done that we need to do has been really refreshing and has evolved in my leadership skills that I've really been trying to enhance over the years. I mean we have everything. We had one woman who wasn't going to go to her son's wedding because she couldn't afford to buy a dress and she didn't want to say I can't buy a dress. Come on in. We had a bunch of board members. We sat down with her. We got her dressed up like Cinderella. She just felt great. Told her about, okay, so you know, before the wedding, the night before, we have a rehearsal dinner. So this is what you're gonna wear for the rehearsal dinner. She's like, wow, I didn't know I had to wear something different. So it's you know, it's great when you help people like that, and it's it's really, really fun. It makes you feel really good. I get great satisfaction from mentoring others. I like to see people learn, I like to see people grow and be passionate about what they like to do. I did have a mentor and that's probably why I'm so passionate about it myself. 
I was fortunate to have Ruth Jacobs, who is well known in the community, as my mentor here at the bank. I've lived in the community for all my life, so giving back to what has always been there for me is something that is important. I really love this community and, and I like to engage the community in whatever um, topic it might be. So when I was at Planned Parenthood, it was around family planning and sexuality education. And here it's around general health and how do we become the healthiest community. So I like to talk with people and get them excited about you know, a, a vision. And um, that, that really feeds me in my work is their excitement. You know, I'm excited about it and they're excited and it's sort of, we feed each other, right? And then that's how things get done. Somebody asked me, they said, have you ever thought of working anywhere else but the Y? And I said, I looked at them and said, no, honestly, no. Why would I? Every day you find a little something, you know, you reach a member, uh, you talk to a member, or you talk to a child or to a family, and you can almost say every single day you've made an impact on somebody's life. I'm not sure there's many jobs that you can do that. So my, I think for me, it's made me the person I am today. I often say, what, who would I be? if I didn't come to America and if I didn't find the why. Another way of, of teaching history is through discovery. And we've been able in the last few years, or what I've been able to create are projects where we actually just um, engage the students with that, that sense of discovery. I love when we do something and a person comes in and says, well, I didn't know my story was history. Every week there's something new that's brought to us that we never thought of before. Um, so we're always creating history and, and that's the best part of being here. What I do do, I do as a result and as a, a part of my faith because I think that part of what I really understand is that when you are given the ability to do something, whether it's writing, whether it is being a good electrician, but whatever your skill is, whatever your gift is, you need to share it with people because that's really important. Um, and so that's part of what you know, I really have been trying to do in my life. I really believe in human potential and it's really important to me that kids in particular get an opportunity and all every chance that they can to reach their full potential. Um, it's important not only for those individual kids but I also know that it's really important for all of us because when kids don't reach their potential we don't reach our potential you know as a community as a state and as a nation. It gives meaning to my life and to my work to help um, to help kids do that and to have every chance possible to be happy and healthy and grow into um, happy adults. We are driven here to keep going and to make Kitty Rescue succeed as long as there are cats out there in need. And there doesn't seem to be any slowing down of that. We are filled up to capacity at this time. Well, everybody says, aren't you getting tired of this yet? <laughs> And my answer to that, dedicating some of my time to making a difference, is important. It's important. If everybody can give a, a volunteer at something that they're passionate about for at least one day a week, this whole world would be a lot better.